In an interview with Bloomberg, Phil Spencer sat down and talked about the future of Xbox and what they're doing with the first party lineup and how they want to make their own studios and acquire new studios that are already put together. What up everybody, it's your boy Gaming Forte, back at it with another video. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot. So it looks like Microsoft is willing to put more money into their own in-house development when it comes to games being made between the Xbox One, Xbox One S, and just any system going forward. They also want to acquire new studios that are already put together which is a really good thing now i just made a video about how ea just picked up respawn entertainment the makers of titanfall 2 and actually gave a reason why i think microsoft missed out on that opportunity but i think this is a really good video to basically just start off that talking point where i just want to say that microsoft is in a situation in 2017 where it's probably one of the worst years they've ever had when it came to just game software launches on a first party level they did have games like super lucky tale that just came out recently and they started off the year with Halo Wars 2 but there is a slew of games that did get pushed to 2018 like Sea of Thieves and State of Decay and Crackdown 3 being one of the more noticeable ones that is missing from the 2017 calendar but the fact that they are really starting to think about the future and how they want to actually bring more value to the box and just to the ecosystem all together is a really great thing. In the interview you really got a chance to see what Phil Spencer was talking about when he says Microsoft is really looking looking at the engagement levels of the system. They're not looking at just the sales of the box. Like he said, they don't make any sizable revenue by just selling the system. It's all about the software that's sold around that system and the people that use the system to actually engage with all the services that Microsoft has going forward. That's why you see things like Game Pass being a thing. You also see Xbox Live flourishing when it comes to just the engagement levels that all these people are using the service for all these different things. That's another reason why Nintendo is in bed with Microsoft when it comes to cross play with Xbox Live because Microsoft looks at it as an opportunity to get their games in more places. So the Xbox One X is just another way to like tie it all together. There's millions and billions of people out there that play on smart TVs and just TVs all over the world. And Microsoft doesn't want to give up on that aspect of gaming. So the fact that he is talking about, we want to bring more first party studios to the forefront and we want to acquire more of them going forward is a really good thing. Most people that subscribe to my YouTube channel will probably know exactly what Phil Spencer said when he took over Xbox where he said he wanted to fix the three main issues with Xbox going forward. The first thing he wanted to do was fix the hardware. He did that by bringing us the Xbox One S and the newly released Xbox One X. These systems basically go above and beyond what we actually want as gamers. The Xbox One S is definitely the streamlined version of a system that just wants to get you in the ecosystem of the Xbox platform with a 4K Ultra Blu-ray player for the people that just want to get a little bit extra out of their system. And and then we have the Xbox One X, which appeals to just the hardcore gamer in the community, people that already support Xbox, and people that just love new tech and hardware and just really appreciate the fact that Microsoft went out of the way to actually make a system that speaks directly to the things that they want in their gaming system. Xbox Live was the next thing that he fixed. We have clubs, we have just all these different entities when it comes to just cross play between different platforms. The Play Anywhere initiative, where you just buy a game on Xbox or you buy a game on PC see through the window store and you can play them on either one of the systems as long as it has to play anywhere tag on it is another really good thing that Phil Spencer brought over to add even more value to just the services of Xbox Live. So I think these are all really good things and the fact that he's going to be concentrating on first party studios and developers is a really great thing. But I know the first thing a lot of people are going to be thinking about is who is going to be the number one candidate that Microsoft should go after to bring into the Xbox family of games. So I think places like Bethesda will be a really good place. They're independently owned. That's a lot of really good franchises like Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Doom, and Wolfenstein. And I think that is a really good jumping off point to actually get those games in your first party lineup. Even Prey is one of those games. So that would just instantly give Microsoft a lot of credibility because a lot of those games are known to just be third party. And if Microsoft can definitely lock that up, that would be a really good thing. What about about the developers behind Ori and the Blind Forest, Moon Studios. Even knowing Ori is owned by Microsoft and not by New Moon, it would be nice to actually own that actual development house to actually say that any games that come out for that developer are going to be Microsoft exclusive. It just gives you more options and more ways to actually impact the gaming community by having more studios. The one thing that a lot of people really don't know about Sony is the fact that they make so many games that are hit or miss because they look at it on a larger scale. They say if we make 10 
games and one of them pop and become very successful that one game that did that will cover the development for all the other games and even if those other games aren't the greatest games it's the fact that they have options people will still go out and buy those games and that is something that sony has as a very big advantage for them in this generation just because they have a number of studios that just pump out a bunch of games microsoft needs to put themselves in that situation and i'm really happy to see that phil spencer's willing to do this unfortunately microsoft missed out on the ea deal when it came to buying respawn entertainment that would have been a really good acquisition like i said in that video before but there will be other studios out there so i think microsoft has a really good opportunity to really make an impact in the gaming community by just doing this and following up and hopefully in e3 2018 we get a lot of good news about all those development houses that phil spencer said he had deals with and hopefully some of those become first party so we can start really relying on microsoft to be putting out a bunch of games on a yearly basis and it doesn't feel like 2017 all over again but guys what do you think do you feel like phil spencer's headed in the right direction when he's talking about buying extra studios i know i am let's talk about that in the comment section thanks for watching this video sub to the channel if you haven't like this video if you like the content it definitely helps out the channel a lot turn on those notifications go let you know the next time my video goes live it's your boy gaming forte you guys have a great week and i'll talk to you in the next video peace